welcome to Floyd Models Daily Vlog. Here we are on Tuesday the 20th, is it 20th? 20th of October 2015. Q&A Tuesday. Um, as you can see, I'm busily doing metalizers with the actual uh, 104, playing with different things. Learned something today. Don't try and mix the colors, kids, because it hates it. It turns to glue, literally gets very gritty. Uh, I tried to mix a little bit of steel with, I think it was burnt metal, uh, just to try and get a different type of hue. Hated it, it gummed up my airbrush and absolutely everything. So we've learned something, okay? But hopefully you can see, uh, we are looking very much the part. Very nice, very shiny. Still having trouble handling it and everything else, hence I've got the old white gloves out these days, uh, just to basically give us a better, um, more or less scratchy feel to it. Unfortunately, even with those on, I'm still wearing through it. It is very thin, it is very fragile. One of those things originally that I said, I didn't think it was that fragile. Testing it, if you flood it down, I think you don't have a problem with it, but certainly sharp edges, it doesn't like. You're gonna wear through it very, very quickly. So kid gloves or cotton gloves, uh, and you should be fine with it. Generally painting this stuff, no problems. We've had nothing to give us any problems like we had with the first batch. This has all been fine, worked an absolute treat. And what I love about it is I had a massive cough my airbrush coughed after i found out it didn't like having colors mixed and it put a big spit of it down onto this one and to be honest it did it on the tail and i look at it now and there's nothing there it had a quick light blow over and it had gone perfect now if that had been anybody else's i think we would have had a real problem with it uh, but this one no problem at all i'm actually just playing now with weathering the metal effect uh in situ rather than coming in with washes and oils and things like that uh so generally it is coming out very well i do just love this finish it just i don't know it it just i don't know I haven't used Alclad for a while, I'll be honest, hands up, but the last time I only used Alclad, if I'm honest, I didn't get a finish like that with it. It seems to have more of a metal heavy look to it uh, and everything else. Now, there's a few problems with it we're gonna talk about when we actually do the full new review of this one. One of the ones is just some of the color callouts I think are a little bit off what they're calling like titanium. You know, my watch is titanium. It isn't that color and things like that. So what I've been doing is testing it, seeing what the color it actually is before you spray it. Because some of them, you know, obviously we've got white aluminium, matte aluminium, we've got the dura aluminium, aluminium, polished aluminium and things like that. And then you seem to get big jumps uh, and something that we learned by using the burnt colors as well is making sure you shake them as you use them. Because otherwise what can happen is it settles and then all the gold is down the bottom so when you spray it you get a lot of gold then the lighter colors come through and they tend to be more metally things like that hence we had this area around the back spraying it to start with it was very gold and then i had to knock it back a little bit but i think with weathering we shouldn't have a problem with that but still love the stuff it's still brilliant anyway it's question tuesday all right this is usually the bit where i try and answer as many questions we get through now to be honest uh, the system in the forum although it's working well with the actual thing i've lost where we were so what i'm going to do now is start at the back i.e the most recent questions we've had and work my way forward and then I'll have a clear out so I know exactly where we took. So anyway, Alan says, uh, hi Phil, love the Ducati and the RB6 builds uh, and I think you've achieved a perfect uh, paint finish. Uh, as for those highly polished, uh, you had a problem with fingerprints and similar theme on the F104, which I have done. Uh, uh, you'd like your lilac colored gloves, which my vinyl ones I use for spraying, would help prevent damage and fingerprints. Would cotton gloves be better? got them as well. Actually, to prove that this isn't a setup, I bought a while ago lots of pairs of them. They're just cheap off of eBay. Um, and I dumped the bag out from underneath the spray booth because literally I think that was 10 pairs of cotton gloves for a fiver, something else like that. Now, they're not the biggest gloves in the world, I'll be honest with you. They are designed obviously for very small people because with long fingers, you find <laughs> because they are a little bit on the small side, but for what I use and they're disposable, then, you know, after I finish with it, I tend to throw them away anyway, okay? But they do the job, they do cut it down, but I think it's just, even with the cotton gloves, you get the wear effect. This stuff is very thin, it's very fragile. You wear, will wear through it. Something like the Ducati, and when we were working on the RB6, probably a bit, obviously it's a harder paint, you won't have any problems with it. What I would probably do now is wear the vinyl on these over the top just to seal my hand off completely. It should make it a lot more handleable. But we're gonna find out exactly how good this stuff is because obviously you need to weather over it and all those things and what i'm not going to do on this is seal it but i'll try on other things we're going to seal it see exactly what happens we've got a couple of little test 172nd aircraft which could do with the respray so we're going to get the metalizers on them for the full on review on this stuff so thank you alan on that one okay if i give it a, a like i know i've read it okay so uh, Peter says, uh, hi Phil, I've recently, uh, sorry, you've recently mentioned that you have a much higher usage of paint and products 
Uh, sorry, I'll recently maybe you go through. Right, okay, so uh, you recently mentioned that you have a much higher usage of paint and products than we do, uh, and rightly so. Uh, it's certainly in my case. So I have Valero model air paints, uh, which are probably five years old. I'm wondering if the problem with clogging uh, an airbrush is because the paints are simply too old to be mixed uh, properly. Uh, I find it really frustrating uh, to start painting, uh, start a painting season only to spend most of my time trying to make the airbrush not spit. I must say I do not have the problem with guns. Uh, do you have any advice for this? Uh, I know, uh, uh, is there a way of using five-year-old paints or shall I forget them about them and buy new? Especially, uh, there's often accurate uh, colors and better formula. To be honest, um, I do the old trick of putting, I've got to find one that's got some in now, uh, but I put in stainless steel nuts. We speak about it with all, a lot of my stuff. Usual thing, I've got them all here, but none with one in. But most of my used colors I use a lot. I actually have a, uh, a nut in there. We've spoken about it a lot. Stainless steel Marie grade nut, that gets it all moving. Now the problem is, if they have been sitting around a while, like this guy here, and it's white milk on top, and that is down the bottom, the fluorescent, that's gonna take forever to mix, okay? This is what all airbrushing, spitting, and uh, you know, the, pull the trigger, nothing happens the paint is clogging the nozzle. Don't forget, we're talking down though that it needs to be in a situation, like in my case, down to a 0.2 uh, needle nozzle, millimeter needle nozzle. So that's a small hole and you've got the needle in there as well. Okay, so that's taking up a bit of it. So it's even smaller again, has got to get a paint through. So if it has got a thick lump, it gets down there. The needle is pushing it and squeezing it and squashing it. You get bits flying out, that's just spitting or it just won't work at all. If you buy a new paint, give it a shake, it normally works flawlessly, that is because it is new. Okay, so that is the trouble with all your paints. Good paint mix, what I'd highly recommend, we speak about it a lot, I've got mine here. This is a little bit of pantyhose or tights in the UK, tied off, you know, just grab a bit, rubber band, I've got one of our wash bottles, it's one of these to be honest, uh, and that just been cut off and then I strain it. That way the lumps stay this side and the other bits don't. If you do pour it off and you do your can into something like a clean cut, one of these, which you should do before you put it in your color cut, what you can do, let that settle, okay, and then very slowly pour it so all the lumps stay down the back end, okay, and that should help with your problem as well, okay. But is it worth going out and buying new? Sometimes, yes, you have to. The reason guns don't do it and stuff like that is they are more of a synthetic paint. The guns and Tamiya is actually a synthetic acrylic, as in it's flammable. That means it's not water in there, that's something else. They tend to not separate as much as your traditional paints. They will do, and trust me, some of my guns paints out there, which are 10 years old now, if I try and use them, they'll be like tar down the bottom. Will take a lot to get them back up and working. If you have paint sitting around, it is just one of those things. It's very hard. There's small, large surface area on them, they will separate. It's not like a jar where it's, you know, of like emulsion or something, which tends to sit in situ, quick wipe and you're good to go. With our stuff, because it is smaller, thicker and everything else, and you're dealing with airbrushes, it's gonna take a little bit more to get going. But in all my cases, when I've had people say, my airbrush doesn't work, it's always the paint. At the end of the day, it's just about paint mix. So mix it as a separate, so you can see exactly what you've got. Pour it slowly and strain it and you shouldn't have a problem with them going through. You can buy, I think, paper filters. I'm sure the paint guys, spray guys will know about this one, but you can actually have like a, pa a paper filter that strains paint as well, so you don't get the lumps and everything through. Might seem a bit extreme to go through all these measures, but by the time you've worked out how many times you take about your airbrush to get it to work, that it's quite, you know, nice to do. You can always tell if your airbrush is working well, just put airbrush cleaner through it to start with. If that sprays fine, you know it's fine, okay? If you've got trouble spraying water or airbrush cleaner or thinners, then you've got a problem with your airbrush. Check your needles, nozzles, seals, things like that. But generally, as soon as you put the paint in, then you get the problems, it is your paint, okay? So it's a 10 minutes spell, you know, spent mixing your paint correctly, straining it and everything else can make for a peaceful spraying, okay? But obviously if you've got something stopping starting, you need to tip out your color cup, strip it down, you're wasting paint, you're wasting time and everything else like that. Okay, so there we go, Peter. Uh, Marcus Boyd, I should read pre-done these, I haven't even looked at any of these questions. Hi Phil, uh, question for you on Styrene Putty. How long does it take? We're talking about the stuff I make up myself using a Styrene sheet and extra thick. Okay, uh, how long does it take to go off where you can work it properly? For example, how many hours does it take before you can uh, 
uh, can uh, imprint into the putty with your nail uh, without obviously leaving anything. Uh, several use several uh, batches using Tamiya, Mech, and other commercial plastic weld, uh, getting favourable results. Uh, but was interested in the time comparison, considering you seem to have perfected your secret brew. Uh, wish you could sell your. Uh, sorry, I wish you could sell it, as my wife would stop thinking I'm a mad scientist. Uh, I'd like to produce a thermal-based seam filler, uh, like a styrene glue gun. And returns to its base when it's cools rather than waiting for a chemical reaction to the process. Maybe you could champion the course. Thank you for all you do. No problem, Marcus. Um, right, okay. How long does it take to go off? How long is a piece of string? How thick have you got it? That's the thing. Obviously, if it's a very thin layer, it's not going to take very long to go off at all. A thin layer, as in something tiny, I could probably get this stuff to go off within half an hour to be sandalable. Okay, sandalable. Is that even a word? Sandalable. Okay, but if you were doing something thick, okay and it's deep um, and obviously it's got to dry all the way through then you're probably looking at 24 hours uh, something else like that when i did the work on this one if you watch the video i filled up that hole because i drilled out too big a hole and put it back in uh, that was completely rock hard and good to go and sand the wall in probably 48 hours and that was absolutely fine uh, and that's how i did it and work way all the way through uh, and away you go but really like the normal fill it depends how thick it is people often ask how thick mine is mine is probably the consistency of like a double cream okay that's how it is that way it's got time to self level but it doesn't just flow off okay i've got mine quite thick um i haven't got the overhead cam on today but generally if i get the lid off mine is the consistency i would say once it's shaken up of around about double cream all right, and it probably looks like it as well, although mine's going great now, uh, and everything else. It's slightly different to the stuff we were gonna commercially release. Uh, that one used to dry off a lot faster and it didn't shrink, um, but we can't do that purely because the chemicals are involved in it. They're horrible, they're nasty, and we don't wanna get down that street of making products which are you know, chemically after warning symbols. We'd have trouble selling them abroad as well and everything else, just trying to get them shipped to be a nightmare uh, and everything else. So that's why doing it this way is a little bit better, okay? It's obviously cheap to make yourself and everything else. It's almost the same. I, I still maintain the only difference between that and the stuff we sort of perfected last year is uh, that one obviously takes a little bit longer to go off. The other one had a better chemical reaction. It was chemical as well, it was a weld action uh, and it went off a lot quicker and there was very limited shrinkage with the old one. With this one, you still get a little bit of shrinkage, but it's not really shrinkage, it's a sinkage, okay? And everything else where the other one had a little bit more robust to it, okay? But generally there is no difference. I don't think there's a, a magical formula out there because trust me i tried it two years trying to come up with it and everything else the thermal one i have looked into as well to be honest there was that gun that was going around where you could build things with it i did think about using something like that line to actually for doing uh filler jobs the trouble you have because it hasn't it's a thermal reaction versus a weld action it's very hard to get it to physically get in to both sides of the stuff you want to sand in. You're always gonna get a little gap, and when it shrinks a little bit, those gaps become cracks, okay? And that's the trouble with thermal, because thermal shrinks as much as chemical reactions and everything else. So as I say, tiny little cracks, and that's really no good for filler, okay? And everything else. And I prefer weld action fillers and stuff like that because it becomes a seamless and a structural part of the model rather than just sitting on the surface. It's a bit like using a putty, uh, you know, versus sort of, you know, Know, an industrial bostic or something you know to actually do it and most times when you're dealing with seams and stuff like that it tends to be something you need to join together it's a failed join so I just prefer the that way of doing it but if somebody wants to perfect that by all means please do it okay uh, Owen says uh, hi Phil after working um, on some challenging kits over the last few months and dropping my Italeri Sunderland nightmare uh, and it was 95% finished uh, which did a good bit of damage, I'm not surprised. Uh, I've lost my mojo. I find myself looking through my stash and I can seem to pick uh, a kit to build. I uh, can't seem to pick a kit to build. Um, my question is, would you have some advice on what to get your mojo juices flowing again? Also, how would you choose a kit to build? Okay, think easy, think simple. 
don't try and think of something complex which you have to think about. Okay, I get this sometimes, trust me. When I come off the back of a big build, spoken about it before, you'll see me do a quick build. That's just to sort of get the mojo going because when you do a big build, you can burn yourself out on it. Okay, and people ask me, not so much modelers, I must admit, it's normally non-modelers uh, actually say to me about, how do you just keep doing this every single day? Don't you get bored with it? Because normally if you do your hobby tons and tons of times, you get bored with it. Um, I don't, I must admit, because I love what I do, all right? But every now and again, I just like to build something that goes together a dream, nice easy one. A good thing in question really was doing the World War One Tamiya tank. Being Tammy, you knew it was good. It had a little bit of engineering to it, a little bit of a, like an interest into, oh, it's got mechanical bits, I like that as well, and can put it together. Another one I love doing, and I know I harp on about them, is the Bandai stuff, you know, the Star Wars stuff. I have an interest in it. You don't have to glue it, you don't have to paint it, you don't have to do any filling, sanding, or anything else usually, uh, and they go together extremely well. And you can then, instead of having to think, well, I've got to do this, and then I'm gonna to have to sand and fill and prime and paint and decal, you can do what you want to do because if you wanted to do something to let on like a bandai kit you could then obviously paint and weather or you can think now i'm gonna bother it's all right as it is you know or you could think to yourself okay well you know we could do this this and this to improve it so you're making the decisions of what you want to build instead of the kit dictating what you want to do with it because all too often you'll get somebody and they'll say oh it's a lovely kit but you need to put an aftermarket copy in it or you need to do this to it you need to do that so you're almost badgered into doing that bit to it so try and pick something in your stash which doesn't take too much and there is some great examples um airfix is 148 stuff they're hurricane beautiful little kit the spitfire the new one as well as the old ones beautiful kit the sea fire as well is a lovely little kit to do if you're thinking things like that and then i'm looking through my stash now and if i was to want to get my mojo back obviously i have got those there i've got that supermarine spitfire which would be shouting at me uh, and everything else but i'll be looking at a kit that i can just put together without having to worry about it too much that I know is going to be a straightforward build and go through so to be honest I've got things down in there like I've got the Hasegawa uh, Corsair this is the uh, A7 uh, Corsair 2 uh, I know it's a nice little kit I know, I know it could do with this it could do with that but actually just right off the bat it's a nice kit on its own so I might think that and as I say armor wise any of the Tamiya tanks they go together really well but so does the main stuff as well so I think oh, I've got a couple of main kits down there and I so I know they go together relatively easily I know I've got no real fit issues with them and I can do as much painting and weathering as I want to because it's my kit at the end of the day and I do what I like okay so that's how I would go about it you know as I say never set yourself up for failure I'm a great believer in that and that's why some of my kits you'll see that I don't build uh, I build them later on um, a couple of people asked me about doing the uh, Tamiya Mosquito to me there's a couple of improvements that can be made with the kit I know there's aftermarket stuff coming along I'm not going to rush into it because it's going to be a big old build it's going to need a little bit of work a little bit of tinkering with and things like that and it's something I will set aside a decent gap for when I'm ready to do it because there's no point in me just building big stuff big stuff otherwise I was get bored off my brain and then you guys will know it as much as I will because the mojo drops the work level will drop uh, and then it's one of those things I'm going to start to come in here and hate it and that is definitely something I don't want to do okay but I look around at my kits and everything else and I can say I thoroughly enjoyed every single one there isn't one in here I thought oh god you know I hated doing that and it, it it got me even the ones I haven't got here like the Corsair which was a nightmare kit and all the rest of it and we had to beat it into the submission it was still fun to do and all the rest of it so from my point of view you know just keep it simple and keep it to where you're happy don't overstress it that would be my thing okay right what else we got Gary Styles see I'm not liking these as I go I should be liking these okay he says Phil what is the best way to remove sticky residue from canopies I mask my canopies with Tamiya tape and get a nice result but when I remove the tape it's left a couple of sticky smears uh, on one or two panels uh, I didn't dip in clear etc beforehand so the results are uh, a little reluctant to start uh, rubbing so you did, didn't, didn't dip and did it before, uh, rubbing with thinners, etc. in case it causes damage. Any advice? Airbrush cleaner is my favourite one. Um, as I say, I tend to use the Vallejo stuff. Uh, it's nice and mild. You're never going to rub your paint away or anything else, but it will take off the glue. Uh, cotton bud, and then 
two-ended so literally I'll just come in one end with the thinners on give it a rub all over it sometimes you get a little bit of overspray inside your canopies things like that as well if you're not like a, a, a properly seated and I'll take it off with that on the inside and then just use the dry end and give them a buff up just like that but that'll get rid of your sticky residue from Tamiya tape as well okay uh do, do, do. that says another question on primers okay so primers uh peter says hi phil some time ago uh now uh another a number of companies uh brought out polyurethane uh primers can you explain the difference between these and normal ones also what are the problems with using them if you go back through our various things i did full-on tests with this stuff we did videos on them and everything else in a nutshell polyurethane think of it as the urethane bit uh, it's like a rubber okay um, so what happens is is that it's actually got a like a latex system inside the primer this enables it for better uh, gap capabilities uh, and a better overall finish it lays smoother instead of it being like a paint that's sprayed on this one all the particles sort of you know mingle together and give you a very nice smooth one finish so if you have got any little imperfections things like that the polyurethane are absolutely brilliant for it downside is polyurethane takes forever to go off okay so if you have got a very thin coat good to go but if you've got a couple of coats on there and it's a little bit thicker polyurethane will take seven days to go off before it's sandable okay so that word again which we're not sure exists okay but if it's not sandable it rolls up and then it tears and it's horrible okay that's why I moved away from it and went on to Steinol res because the resin in that is what makes it sandable as opposed to the other ones which I used to love don't get me wrong they're fantastic but because I'm building almost every day and certainly doing sanding and filling every day I can't wait a week for it to go off so it just took too long for me so that's why I moved over but as you say we use the Vallejo stuff it was fantastic and the MIG ammo stuff was absolutely fantastic there's nothing wrong with the primer itself it just takes far too long to go off for my working abilities where Steinol Res gives me slightly better results if I'm honest and I can sand it in 20 minutes we did it here live we did a one take during I think it was the live show where we actually you know put it down and then sanded it 20 minutes later perfect no problem at all uh, another question about primers. You've recently started using Steinol Res uh, ba uh, primer from Badger. I hope the spelling is correct. Is it worth the money? Uh, and how does it clean up after use, etc.? Thanks for the fantastic workmanship as you show us. Yes, it is worth it. It is very good. I know it's a little bit tricky to get hold of, but the way I look at it is all of those pros um, uh, that you have with the actual uh, polyurethane stuff. I've still got it down here. Here we go. There's one of those. Uh, this is the Leo stuff and the mix stuff I've got somewhere um, as well. These really are very, very good. They're fantastic. No problem. They give you a great finish and all the rest of it but you have to wait for them to dry. And as I say, seven days is a little bit too much for me. So what I tend to do is, is try and sign something that works quicker. Steinol Res, which is very new to me, uh, is brilliant. I've never had a problem. I used it on this. I've used it on all the builds recently uh, and it works really well. The only thing is, mentioned it the other day, put in something to mix it because it doesn't like being um, you know, uh, thick down the end. It doesn't mix particularly well. So I'm gonna get something in there that actually gets this stuff going and you'll be absolutely fine. Also thinning it, um, don't stick in airbrush cleaner because I found it gets a little bit thick. You can, like all thinners, it will work, but it's not the best one for it, okay? I did find just a normal bit of water, absolutely distilled water, worked an absolute treat. And mine's a lot wetter than it was. And it was my fault because what happened was I wasn't mixing it correctly and down the bottom it was like thick. The reason I know that is when I dropped in the actual, the nut, I didn't hear it hit the bottom. It just went quiet. So I knew it was thick down the bottom. When I was shaking it, I couldn't hear anything. And then all of a sudden, you hear the knocking and you know you've got it on the go and all the rest of it. Okay, so yeah, Steinol Res, it's fantastic stuff. Personally, from my point of view, I wouldn't be using anything else. But then don't forget, I did say that with MIG, with Vallejo and everything else. When the next best thing comes along, it goes and I'll replace it with the whatever works best. But certainly, I don't think we're going to find anything else for a while. It really is nice. The only thing I will say on a cautionary note, um, I was supposed to be, and they never showed up, um, Badger were going to send me some bits and pieces um, to test. Uh, there could be a reason why they never did because I have heard there is problems with the colored ones They do it in black red and I think green uh, Some of the members have mentioned that it doesn't seem to be as good as the gray So the gray I know works perfectly the others. I don't know. Okay So you might just want to be uh, a little bit buyer beware on those. All right Okay, so we're going back a page now back to page six Which no doubt I have to go to the bottom and do come on Okay, previous 
Do, do, do. One second, how are we doing for time? Oh, we've got loads of time. Um, so we've got no Sid this week. Uh, two things. One, I've been helping out my parents with uh, uh, their house today. So obviously I wasn't here until uh, recently. And secondly, Sid's got a bit of a cold as well. So sorry, Sid. Bless him. Okay. De -de -de. Colin says uh, also, oh, there's another one there. Hi, Phil. Uh, mostly uh, pretty obvious you want to build the Star Wars uh, nowadays. It seems you're a big fan of this stuff uh, and a lot of us don't really want to know about. Yeah, all right. Uh, but this is your site, your deal, fair play. All right, okay. Uh, I'd rather review something like the Shackleton. Oh, charming. Right, okay. Very nice, sorry. Uh, also, Phil, uh, you semi-promised you'd build the Mosquito. It seems to be your uh, going back on this. A lot of folk want to see it, why not? I explained that a minute ago. And also, um, I'd just like to say, you know, I do this because I enjoy it. I do it when I get the kit is there to do something. There's no way I was going to build the Mosquito coming off the back of that one, uh, of the actual doing the uh, Typhoons. Both the Typhoons are big projects and everything else. These ones are a little bit smaller, quicker ones. I'm enjoying doing them. And then obviously I can bring you stuff a lot quicker. And I promised a lot of people, obviously we do the bikes and now we've done the bikes and the cars. So I'm just trying to keep everybody happy you know i'd like to do an aircraft uh, an airliner before now and christmas i've got one lined up i know what i'm going to do for that one so again it's just sort of finding something a little bit for everything you know the star wars stuff yes i am a massive fan of it and i won't touch any and i won't even do the reviews anymore if you don't want them until um the actual where uh, we get closer to december okay anthony pond hi phil quick question it goes with that, uh, without saying uh, decal should be applied onto a gloss surface. But watch your tornado build uh, and it didn't look uh, as if it was glossy at all uh, when you applied the decals to the tail. I'm building the kit myself at the moment. Uh, and with such fine panel lines, I don't really want to cover them up with multiple layers of gloss. Uh, I also use the guns paints uh, with the self leveling thinners. Many thanks, Tony answered itself there Tony you know how good that paint is what I'll tend to do is um, if it looks horrendous uh, then obviously it will get a gloss coat uh, and then decal onto it but sometimes I'm looking at the decals and you're thinking if I remember rightly they were cartograph decals we used on there they're quite good they tend to work really well with the softeners and setters so it's that thing of thinking okay we've got a very nice smooth satin finish we can probably decal onto that and do it. Also, when you're looking at doing it, think about how much carrier film you've got as well. If you've got something with loads of carrier film, I like, I don't know, um, the World War II bombers uh, or fighters, where you've got, you know, the wording on there like WM round or something, you get lots of big carrier film between those items if it's one decal, okay? Those will need a nice gloss finish because you've got lots of silvering potential, okay? If you were doing like I did and it was just round doors and markings, very small, very little uh, carrier film, you're not going to get any silvering really, if any, then I won't bother. You know, we can just go straight in. Use the setting uh, solutions as well. So we use a softener first, then a setting solution afterwards. Obviously, from my point of view, use micro set and sole. You really shouldn't have a problem, okay? But if you're thinking you've got something like, I don't know, Say we were doing this uh, Starfighter now and we were thinking, okay, this is going to be in something like a Tiger scheme and it's covered in decals, then we're going to be working on it a lot. We need all the decals to be positioned, moved around, perhaps adjusted, things like that. Then obviously I'd go for a gloss coat down on there just to make working easier uh, and make things easier for me as we go. But if it's just a few, like a handful, then I would then say, no, not worried about it. Um, and we're just going to go straight in on a satin. Obviously I'm not going to do it over a flat or really rough finish but if it's a nice smooth one you've used the actual gun stuff as you know it's pretty good self leveling thinners tends to give it a very smooth finish then obviously you should have no problems with it but again if it's something where you've got lots of it then think about perhaps glossing it first if it's something like on a tail just gloss the tail don't have to worry about the rest of it just gloss the tail uh, and you can do it just like that okay uh did, 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 looking at steinal res somebody's pointed out where to get it which is true because barnwell body works shop co dot uh, co com com sorry it's uh barwell body shops dash shop uh sorry i'll get this right www dot barwell body works dash shop dot com uh and that's where mine came from as well so well done to them okay that i'll talk about a uh, later one because i've got something lined up for that uh, do, do, do. Any suggestions where to get that? We've done that. That's why I'm doing this backwards. 
Uh, no question, this is Paul Morgan. Hi Phil, no question, thanks for uh, sticking up the old videos. Yes, the old um, videos are on the YouTube page. I need to link them onto the main site, uh, but they are up. They're gonna rotate, so <laughs> then you'll get another one. Amazingly, YouTube hasn't spotted one with some music on it, uh, which is gonna go up next week, I think. We'll do that next week. Okay, dig dig dee. Uh, Andrew Robwell, hi Phil. Uh, nice Q&A show this week. Nice to see Sid back, he'll be back next week. Uh, nice to see you back. If he does dress up as Yoda, that would make him your pot of one. Uh, please be careful, we don't want to last time. Uh, just wanted to ask if you ever use screen wash as cleaner. I've tried it and it doesn't seem to be as powerful as enough. Uh, but I don't know if anything can be added to make it better. Thanks a lot for the show as always. Um, no, I don't use screen wash. By the time you've bought, I think, a screen wash, you might as well be in one of these. You know, I don't know how much these are, 2 dollars something else like that. Do what I do, be cheap. Take half out. I have, I should have, have we still got one? Or I, I think give one away, yeah, no, we've still got them. I keep the old ones, okay? And then what I actually do is, when this is brand new, I will tip half of it into one of these and fill it up with water and then keep this as neat. When I do all my color changes and quick and just blast out and cleans and things like that, I use the one that's 50-50 with water and then I use the good stuff, as in the half that's left for the final clean out before I put my airbrush away at the weekend, at the end of the day and things like that. Uh, and that way you've got best of both worlds and it's saving you a third on the cost of your actual uh, bottle of uh, uh, cleaner. So definitely something to look at. Okay, uh, Clint Carter, he says, good day, Phil, uh, no question, just wanted to say, good to see Sid back in his chair, you took well together, bless him. Yeah, well, say, we'll try and get Sid back again, we're having back next week. Uh, Ryan, I've noticed you have a Revel 172nd A400 in your stash, are you planning to do a kit review or even better build this? Uh, PS, 172nd builds would be great. I have built 170 seconds. They tend to be big 170 seconds, but we do do them. Uh, I have reviewed it, yes, back in the day when we used to do the full show. Uh, so when we had the full show and it used to be, uh, you know, obviously the big thing with the builds and the reviews and everything all in one, it's in one of those. So it's in one of the old ones. If I remember rightly, it had quite nasty sink marks on the top of the wings that you need to take care of. No plans at the moment, but never say never. It is down there. Is it down there even more? Actually, I think it's moved. It's in the... The other stash, I have two stashes now. I've got one stash down here, I've got one stash upstairs. Uh, but what I'll do is when, obviously they come up for voting, if it gets in, your votes count, then obviously I'll build it. Okay, uh, Kevin Smith, hi Phil. Been, uh, always been impressed with the way um, you move your model builds on at cracking pace. Would you deem, uh, what would you deem your best advice to modelers enable them to progress their kits at a reasonable pace? Um, focus, focus on your builds okay don't get distracted by having two or three builds on the go at once okay and literally just focus on getting it done okay also don't tie yourself down into that thing of uh you know like certain aftermarket stuff that takes forever okay and for very little effect for that i'm thinking wheel wells sometimes wheel wells are that bad yes you need to have an aftermarket one in there but 90 percent of kits there's no point putting a wheel well in it because no one's ever going to see it okay unless you're a little bit of a puritan and you know it's done then that's it this is purely for doing moving them on at a cracking pace okay if you're uh, a model who builds two models a year then absolutely kudos to you kick out two fantastic looking models every year then that's great it may be one it might not even be one a year but you want to do everything right but for this is for the guys who want to knock out a model a month or something else like that focus on the areas where you think it deems the work so from my point of view like doing the starfighter it's all about photo etch cockpit and that's about it a photo etch cockpit and a seat i know it came with a kit but that is all this kit needs the rest of it is actually all pretty good with no problems at all okay so from my point of view i can push through this model with very little time. We're spending a lot more time because of the actual metal work. If it was something more of a standard, we'd done camo, we'd have finished this pie now. But because we've got the metalizers and everything else in there, it's not so much of a problem. Okay. Okay, next up, Val says, Hi Phil, I'm currently building the Revel Lancaster Dambuster version. Uh, how would you approach the black work? I'm thinking these aircraft weren't used uh, extensively, so it wouldn't be hugely weathered. Uh, would you... Uh, would you use something like Tamiya rubber black uh, with some uh, panels uh, lights, uh, sorry, panel centers lightened, a bit like some of the NATO black? Uh, or would you do something different? No, pretty much on the head, uh, probably use Tamiya rubber black. 
So you really, yeah, okay. Something else like that. It's a really nice color. Uh, it actually works really well in that scale, 170 second as being a black. And then what I'll probably do is hit it with a tiniest bit of dark gray, like a gunship gray. So if you're using all Tamiya's, I'm thinking XF24, just a few drops in there just to give it a shade difference and do centers of panels with it just to lighten up, okay? And everything else like that. And that's probably all you need to do with it. With the dirt from streaks from the engine, things like that, it's a lighter color. So you might want to come in with a lighter gray just to put some streaks across it. Uh, and when you come in, if you're going to give it a weathering wash, something else like that, then obviously what I'd probably do is knock up a mix with either the black or obviously the dark dirt with a tiny bit of gray in there just to lighten up the wash as well. So you don't want a white lines all over it because if you put gray on it, that's what it'll look like. Okay, but you want something darker just to lighten it up slightly uh, and go through it all like that. And then just put the dark dirt wash or something else on on the top half and you have no problem with it but as you said they weren't massively dirty they were looked after certainly uh, a little bit better than others but obviously they did work you know and it was wartime they weren't polished up every day so you are going to get some you know obviously dirt stains streaks and all the bits and pieces down there they were at low level as well all the time so that's what you know obviously they would have been getting a lot more weathered than up high okay so with all the blacks, just think about it and think about just changing the tones a little bit. So add a little bit of gray here and there. If you find yourself go too far, just come back with the black and go back with the, like the neat uh, rubber black and just blow in some areas. So, you know, if you find yourself, you've got that thing, I call it windowing, where you've got like gray windows all over everything. Just put squiggles, T-shapes, Tetrising, you'll hear me call it a lot of the time where you're coming in with different shapes and squiggles and things and all things like that. Okay, one more question. Okay, so uh, David says, hi Phil, I'm about to start the Tamiya 132nd Mustang P51. Uh, this kit uh, is the silver version. The kit appears to be sprayed silver, not plastic plated. I don't know this kit, do I? I did they do a version with the chrome effect? I presume they're doing it, unless it is something else. Have you experienced this type of kit? Uh, if you uh, if you do have, how do you handle such a finish? Okay, question three is, um, is it sealed in any way or should I put a sealing coat? Uh, uh, it is completely uniform boring in colors. So how do you spray different colors and what type of paint should you use? Now, um, Ah, right, okay, I'm aware they did the 148 scale, as in that chromey finish, which was like dipped, or it certainly looked like it was dipped. Great, apart from when you took off the sprue, you have big plastic sprue tabs and things like that all over it. It could be a case of if, um, a lot of the guys talk about bleach, if you soak it in bleach or cola and things like that, you can actually peel this stuff off and just start with plastic, unless you want to use it. Um, the other way, of course, you could do is just prime right over the top of it, build it as you normally would, treat it as normal and then prime the entire thing afterwards and start again with something like this highly recommend you put the black base down first and come in with this stuff and i tell you I, you know the guys who were here the other week uh, with me i was talking about it to them i had a couple of members in i think sid was here as well uh, i was talking about the p51 that i've already done it could get a respray at some point with this stuff because I think this stuff on that P51 would look absolutely fantastic. Okay, and that's got buffer balls all over it, so it's a bit of a nightmare uh, and it's been sealed. But I think black base over the top, repaint it, it'd be absolutely fantastic. So with your one in a comparison, I think you have no harm really in priming right over whatever's on it and go through it. Just remember, it's going to be highly shiny, this stuff that you're going over, so you want to do it. But I'm not sure if it's the dipped chromey types that were like the 148s had. They did a special edition uh, in metal finish it was horrible um, or it's been sprayed in somewhere you're saying it looks like it's more sprayed uh, than obviously been the dip type so yeah definitely you should be able to just prime right over it and treat it as an all kit and move through it like that okay so that's about it for today i'll tell you what we do one more because that gets me up to the thing hi phil no such uh, uh not so much a question as a plea after your bike uh, and car builds you seem to have used very little hardener in your two-pack paints. I wondered if you'd be willing to experiment with different, uh, with some difficult products like uh, Alclad clear coats and Vallejo polythene primers, uh, which seemed uh, to forever to go off. That's what we were talking about earlier. They do take forever to go off. Alclad clear coat, which is well, that one, I do believe. 
it does it takes forever to go off i've used all of these if you want to go back and look at the builds this one was on the do 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 f14d 130 second we speak about it and use it in there don't get me wrong great stuff just takes forever to go off okay and everything else you're not going to get a massive mirror lacquer finish with this stuff though that's the trouble you can but it takes absolutely forever use a two-pack um, lacquer and do it that way okay then you're going to get them uh, I am probably not the only one that have these products uh, products going to waste because of the drying time uh, the finish uh, both is fine that is the thing though you know with them it's what we're saying here David they just take forever to go off it's great if you're a, a slower modeler shall we say or you just model at the weekends because you've got a week to go off but if you're on a bit of a roll then you have to wait for it because as I say with that one uh, with the clear coat uh, I remember having to wait two extra days for it to go off on the actual Tomcat and then to be honest I think it was still wet about two weeks after I'd finished it uh, purely because you handle it you get that sort of tackiness off your hands and everything else yeah I know other guys and they're slower modelers and because they're slower modelers and they say oh I did a bit last night I did a bit next week didn't touch it for two weeks it's fine because that's the way they do it but if you're a quick modeler it's a bit of a nightmare when you've got products that take time to dry and everything else and there's no way of really speeding them up either you can put them into like obviously you can get drying cabinets and stuff like that or stick them in your airing cupboard anywhere that's warm and dry that tends to speed things up no end but there is no miracle thing to these it's just a question of time until they go off and that sometimes they can take a long time to do that okay so really that's it for today thank you for all your questions i'll get them sorted out in the forum after I've finished editing this and then we can actually put it together into some sort of semblance uh, and everything else like that. So then what we can actually do is like clear some of the old ones away now uh, and then sort of, you know, have a, a category, a new category for the new questions that go up and everything else like that. I'm going to carry on with the uh, Starfighter here, which is coming together absolutely fantastic. Hopefully we're in a position to get the wings on everything onto it a little bit later on or tomorrow and everything else like that. Then we can think about obviously a bit more weathering, how we're going to handle the weathering, get the decals on and push through. To be honest, I haven't started Started on the helix yet purely because I'm using all the owl clads or sorry all the actual metalizer paints the AK stuff things like that and it's everywhere and everything's a little bit silvery so I didn't want to start on the other one until this was out of the way until I actually finished doing the metal work but as soon as we have done which should be tomorrow then obviously we can get going on the helix as well and that will be up so tomorrow what you're going to get which will catch up quite nicely because we talk about the metal coats going down on this will be another part from the F104 part one of the helix should go up on Monday if not it'll be on Wednesday and then another part of that one will go up on Monday and everything else like that everything else so there we go that's it for today catch you all tomorrow happy modeling